this is where the fun begins. Welcome to the Contingency Plan Podcast. My name is Jedi Master David, and with me as always is Darth Austin. Hello, everyone. How's it going today? I'm doing good. How about you? Good. Well, I hope you're ready for this podcast because this, well, this is an all-sand podcast. No, no. Wait, what? An all-sand podcast. This is all about sand. It is coarse and rough and irritating. It gets everywhere. But not like here because okay, I'm in because here is smooth and soft. Okay, Annie. <laughs> yes, this is an all creepy Anakin Skywalker podcast. Still down, or should we just go with a reread podcast? It's fifty fifty. Let's flip a coin here. <laughs> I don't know. It's the reread. Okay, well we'll go reread podcast. Yes, this is back again. I don't know what episode it is. This is like episode six or seven. Uh, I'd say seven because we had the intro and we're on the sixth chapter now. There we go. Yeah, the sixth chapter. Unless you're on YouTube. No, that's <laughs> true. Sixth chapter of uh, Vector Prime. We're running through the new Jedi Order currently in Vector Prime. The chapter's name, Take Me Far, Far Away. I feel like you have to say that in a Frank Sinatra voice. I almost. was just thinking about that. <laughs> Let's fly away. So anyway, yes, uh, back again. Uh, appreciate you stopping by here. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, and just jump a little bit into into Jedi Council. So uh, how's it been going this week? Not too bad. Getting back to the daily grind. We just uh, had a little camping trip. I had about yep. five days off. My first vacation of the year. It's been pretty nice. <laughs> yeah. Not not acclimating back to normal life. Well. <laughs> no, no. It, it's it's kind of. It's kind of always a, a grind coming back from uh, from any sort of vacation here, but uh, but hey, at least you have all the fun of a podcast to get back to. That's right, exactly. This is the only thing that made me survive the week. <laughs> Looking <laughs> forward to this. <laughs> Absolutely. What yeah. about you? What's going on with you? Oh, yeah, just just work, just work like normal. Yeah, we had our camping trip was which was a nice. Uh, it was just an overnight, but uh, yeah, we we did that, and then I promptly came back and went to work. So, <laughs> so, so it wasn't wasn't really uh, wasn't really much there, but uh, but yeah, that's that's pretty pretty much what's going on here. Uh, I don't know, not much else. Have you been avoiding food because I feel like we we overdid it that entire vacation? Well, we did we did do a lot of eating there. Uh, you had to hit the hit the the bike a little bit and hit the weights a little bit and uh try and burn some calories and uh I don't know how much I'm how much headway I'm making on that but but my activity meter says I'm doing good I guess so I'll go with that did you you know put in all the German food that you ate and no. all the other stuff. No, so just I, assuming you had a normal week with normal food, huh? I am not a calorie counter. I, I refuse <laughs> I refuse to get that if I get fat and the only way to get me unfat is by counting every single calorie, I'm probably just not going to do it. I think we need to worry more about all that salt we had. <laughs> well, there, yeah, that's uh, the got to hydrate after that. Get all that stuff purged for sure. A lot of that freeze dried food, man, on the trail. Keeping it light is nice, but uh, sure isn't uh, maybe the healthy, healthiest thing in the world. <laughs> probably not, but that's okay. Yes, yes. So, uh, so yeah, that's pretty much what's been going on here. Hopefully, all of you listening uh, had a had a good and uh, productive week. Um, let's go ahead and uh, jump on over to the Holonet real quick. We have a little tidbit of Star Wars news. Uh, you got that pulled up somewhere? Uh, yeah, I had one of the articles. Uh, David here is the one that found this one, so I'll let him kind of lead the way on this, but... Yeah, we we had a little little piece of news. Uh, uh, your your phone's going nutty. It's trying to go different directions. Yeah, it thinks you want to read it wide. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, apparently. So uh, we actually have another addition to episode nine's cast. Uh, Dominic. Oh, geez, I'm so horrible at reading names. Monaghan, Monahan. I'd Mon- say Monahan. 
Well, there's a G there. Anyway, I it's know him right. as Mary from the Lord of the Rings trilogy. Um, he also uh, starred in, in that TV show Lost. And I'll be honest, I, I never got into that show. And- he was amazing in Lost. I watched the whole show. Um, I can't quite remember his character's name, but yeah. He's a great actor, and I'm excited to see what he's going to do. It should be interesting. I don't think there was any speculation as to what he would do was there, but I, I know he's he's I basically hooking anything. back up with JJ, and that's kind of what the the excitement is about. But yeah, I don't think they have on on what he'll be. But I don't know. I don't even I don't I don't even know anymore. We've added we've added a couple of new castmates uh, here for this uh, incoming movie. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm interested to see how, how they'll use him. Do, do you think it's going to be maybe a significant role, or do you think it's just going to be like a little, almost like a cameo, or, well, maybe not a cameo, but like a like a definitely supporting, supporting cast? He's been both um, between Lord of the Rings and Lost. I mean, he does well in either role. I think it's really going to depend on what direction they take with the movie. If they do a time True. jump and maybe there's more force sensitives, he could be one of them. Um, mm-hmm. I think that'd be interesting to see him as a Jedi. Yeah, but I don't know what they're going to do. I, mean, I, I, I still, I still have a feeling like we're, we're, I don't know. I, I think we've discussed this before that we we would like a more Jedi centric movie. Um, I don't. I feel like in this coming movie, I don't think we're going to see more lightsabers. I think that we were spoiled with the prequels because they were so Jedi centric that they were yeah. the rest of them just they don't fulfill that fantasy for us like the prequels did. Yeah, I'm not saying the prequels were the best Star Wars movies by far, <laughs> and Force Awakens, as far as acting goes, is probably one of the best for acting. Um, yeah, I mean, I I really enjoyed the Force Awakens. Um, I know, I know your dark side feelings on the Last Jedi, but, but no, the Force Awakens was good. But yeah, I mean, again, we're we're basically dealing with, uh, with centrally like two, two mm, Force users. Um, I actually see if I pull it up here. I don't think I've showed you this one. It's kind of long, and honestly, on a phone, it's not going to be real user friendly. But I did pick up this uh, this picture here. And it was, uh, I'll show it to you later because, again, I got to elongate it and so forth. But the whole thing was it was kind of like a, uh, oh, uh, kind of like a get over it fans who hated Last Jedi. And it starts the first panels like, oh, here's Luke Luke Skywalker, like raising his X-Wing. He's like, oh, no, I'm going to be Luke Skywalker and Ray's smiling. <laughs> and, and, then, um, and then there's a panel here where it's like, uh, Kylo, when he tells Ray about her parents, she's like, your parents are Luke Skywalker and Obi-Wan Kenobi. <laughs> and like, you see a little Obi-Wan ghost there. He's like, hello. Uh, and then the, the next panel's uh, uh, um, Finn, and he's got, he's got uh, Poe like floating. And he's like, oh, look, guys, I'm force sensitive. <laughs> And then in the side of it, you have um, Kelly, Mil- Kelly Marie Tran's character and then uh, Admiral Holdo, <laughs> and it says, and we don't exist. <laughs> and then we we go on a little further, and there's a confrontation between uh, Snoke and, and Luke. Uh, there you are, Snoke, or should I say Darth Pelagius. <laughs> Darth Pelagius's dad, Darth Insanius. But you're also Mace Windu. <laughs> yeah, and, and then the next panel's like uh, Leia and Han, who didn't die. Uh, I faked my death, kid. And and then this this whole this whole panel here with Luke, where he's basically saying, you know, well, this is how you can hold on to your childhood fantasies and take no risks and everything. And the last panel is director, not Ryan Johnson. <laughs> nice. So. <laughs> So you know, I, I get the gripes on last year. I won't harp on that in this because we're, we're we want to get to the reread. Yeah, but, and I uh, won't really add a lot to that. But I did see one pretty good meme, and for those of you who um, follow the Contingency Plan podcast on Facebook, you'll already know what I'm talking about. <laughs> but uh, it was basically the moment where Kylo tries to turn Ray after killing Snoke, and I can't pull it up right now because my phone's being stupid, but. Um, Basically, he says, join me. And uh, Ray says, no, just be better and 
you know, just run the galaxy the way it's properly meant to be run, take care of people, and we can work together. And Kylo's like, you know what, you're right, let's do this. And that just cuts to the end credits, yeah. director the, the Ryan end. Jones. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I mean, uh, you can't be afraid to take risks. And, and, and in a lot of ways, these books took took a lot of risks in different character development and all the children. And, and obviously we're going to have, uh, I think we're going to have a little bit of a debate on some of the children of Solo in this chapter, but we'll, we'll get to that a little further. But I think that was, that was about all for, for news this week, wasn't it? Yeah, there's just not a lot right now. It's going to be a lot of speculation for the next probably six months, honestly. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're, we're definitely, as we march on to, to the new movie, we, we definitely have a lot to think about. Um, like you said, I think what we're hoping for is just a more force-based movie because it seems like it's been all war, not really a lot of focus on the Jedi, and with both spin-off movies, Rogue One, and Solo being about on force sensitives, it just feels like the Jedi have been kind of left out. Well, yeah, and, and in a lot of ways it has. We'll, we'll kind of we'll see how they play it, but. I think if I, you know, again, if we judge J.J. based upon Force Awakens, you know, he had that flashback scene when Ray touched the, the light. Well, not a flashback, like a force force vision when Ray touched a lightsaber. So I kind of feel like, you know, we might get some flashbacks. We might get some more, uh, you know, backstory maybe. And, and that's really what we were all hoping with uh, with The Last Jedi was to get more of the backstory. But we might get that here. I mean, honestly, I think it'll just have to be a four-hour movie. <laughs> or, you know, I've seen a lot of people talking about making it a two-part. Um, oh, I hate that. I was not a big fan with Harry Potter and the other two-part kind of movie deals, but not that the movies was, were was, bad. Was, but was, was Deathly Hollows the only one? I think so, okay. yeah. And yeah. Both very good movies, but to do that instead of just name it another movie. Well, but uh, you there, can't do that with a trilogy. There's really a lot can't. of there's a lot to Deathly Hollows and Oh, sure. We're not going to discuss Harry Potter here. Uh that'll be for another podcast or if you, you know, if if you want to stop waiting for us to make all the podcasts in the world, uh head on over to Swish and Flick. That's a that's a darn good Harry Potter podcast right there. And they'll fill you all the way in because they're also doing rereads. And I think right now, uh, as of this, when this drops, I think they're still in The Prisoner of Azkaban, which was one of my really? favorite books. Okay. So do you think there's any... How do I put this? Is there any reason to make it a two-part movie? Is there anything good that can come from that, in well, your opinion? I could see it just, just to add in more information, just to make... Just to wrap up the story, I think J.J.'s Abram or J.J.'s Abram, J.J. Abrams' vision of uh, Star Wars from what we got in The Force Awakens was probably the way it needed to go. Which again, we've discussed this. I don't like switching directors. No offense, Ryan Johnson, but I kind of like to see somebody do the entire thing. But um, I think, I think if he if he had the opportunity to do all three movies. I feel like the second movie would have had all the things necessary to progress us into the third, and in the third, we could just have conflict resolution. I agree. The classic formula for a trilogy is you have origin, you have backstory, and then you have conflict resolution. So, you know, like Lord of the Rings, for example, you know, the Fellowship, you have all the backstory and all the lore, all that lore, and, you know, the start of the journey. Then you have um, Two Towers which was, uh, you know, getting a little bit deeper, but also providing more action there, too. And then and a uh, lot of character building as and, well. And a lot of character building. And then, uh, you know, uh, Return of the King, uh, you then get into the, the resolution of the conflict that's been plaguing you through the first two movies. Including so, about two hours of just war scenes. <laughs> <laughs> well, but there... Oh, God, that, uh, that was And another epic. two hours of... Really good dialogue. Yeah, and, isn't and that the, like a three and a half hour movie? <laughs> uh, the, well, if you watch the extended edition, it's it's which is the only way I'll watch it anymore. I still get chills. If you remember, uh, and we we have not transitioned to the Lord of the Ring podcast. If you do want to listen to a good Lord of the Rings podcast, listen to an unexpected podcast. Uh, those are a couple buddies of mine, and they do a great job. They're doing a reread uh, through the books, but the scene that I love was when. You know, Gondor's being besieged, and here comes the men of Rohan, 
and you have uh, Theoden, and he has that speech, and he's just yelling, Dad! And they're all screaming and, and everything. The sun's going up, and they just start their charge. That still, to this day, uh, gives me goosebumps, because that, that was a great cinematic moment, in my opinion. Yeah, I agree. And I would say probably my favorite scene would be uh, Aragorn figuring out that basically he's a king and you know talking to the dead army. That, <laughs> that whole scene was... And I can't think of the exact name of the army. I'm, I'm sorry. Well, it's been the, a minute since I've yeah, watched they, those movies. They but. were just, yeah, the, the undead that uh, that swore their swords to Isildur, and then they reneged on their promise. Yeah, uh, maybe one day we'll start one of those podcasts where we should really be talking about Star Wars. Because even Star Wars, the, the original trilogy... You know, you had you had backstory and, and a lot of you know a lot of the um, the building, the lore of the Force, and then again, you know, in Episode Five, you know, you had a little bit more character building. You know, the 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 building of Luke's training, and then again in, in Return of the Jedi, we see that conflict resolution. There, there, <laughs> there is a formula to making a successful trilogy, and I think that despite the fact that I appreciate people taking risks. At the same token, at the same token, sometimes you can take too many, and the time to take risks is usually in episode one of the trilogy, not two. I agree, because two can be a turning point where everyone just jumps off the bandwagon, and the third one's just a flop, and I, I'm afraid that's going to happen, just like we saw with Solo. But could you imagine yeah. the end of a trilogy not selling over $50 million? <laughs> Well, you, you know, in, in that case, I think... I think pretty much everything so far, aside from with the exception of Solo, topped the one billion dollar mark. So, and, and Solo, um, yeah, as I said, I, I think that for that to be considered not a flop, it would have had to have hit that at least 500, 500 million, which I don't think to this date. I'm not sure if it has. I haven't looked at box. I haven't looked at the the sales in, we, in a while. When but, we did the review, I think it was around 118 million. And that was mm. quite well. That's a when while we, after when we, we it at, came out. Well, when we attempted, when we attempted to do it, because we Ooh, actually correct. never we never finished correct. that that video. One day we'll get to that and post it on. But I think we're gonna wait to actually do that once the the DVD comes out. But I think around that time they were somewhere th- with domestic and the foreign gross. They were actually more so around like three fifty, three hundred fifty million. It's not point. terrible, but that's that should be opening weekend. Well, or uh, pretty close, pretty yeah, really close for Star Wars. I, I think I think if they if they would have hit over a hundred million opening weekend, I think we would have all been a lot happier about it. But uh, but yeah, I think they I think they were in the realm of eighty in the in opening week, and then it just slowed way down. But we'll see. Getting back to that topic, though, I'll just say real quick, and we'll get to the reread. Um, I think it's a bit of a cop out, but you're gonna have to give JJ a bit of a pass to an extent because of what he's dealing with. And the only reason I could see doing a part one and two for uh, the next movie is to retcon a lot of stuff that he didn't want to have happen and Mm -hmm. build the characters in the way that he wanted them to be built. Because I don't think Ryan Johnson really had his vision on what he wanted from those characters. Well, I think think Ryan... Had a vision, and I think he executed his vision, but he didn't execute JJ's vision. And I think, in large part, I think that there are a lot of Star Wars fans who didn't appreciate his, that division, that that vision as much uh, as some do. Now, I like the movie for what it was, but yeah, I mean, there are definitely other things I would have I would have done differently. But you know, I'm not a Hollywood director either, so correct. You have a lot of ego in that. I mean, you the good side of you wants to help J.J. out and, you know, Mm -hmm. make his trilogy a success. So to some extent, you want to follow his vision. But at the same time, you want to prove yourself. Right. You get to direct Star Wars. Mm -hmm. I would be like a kid in a candy shop. I mean, I would be so excited. Oh, absolutely. To not interject your own vision of what you think Star Wars should be, anyone would do it. Yeah. I'll give him that pass. Yeah, but we're going to have to see how it all goes. Obviously, I think think people need to definitely – decompress a little bit and uh and give it a chance because i i think uh i think we're in for a pretty epic movie um i hope i'm right about that but i i think we are i think we're in for some epic stuff i just hope that people haven't uh haven't jumped too far away from the franchise yeah you're right and the best way to decompress is to uh 
Listen to us reread the New Jedi Order. Heck yeah. So yeah, let's let's go ahead and jump right in here. We've got uh, chapter six, Take Me Far, Far Away, and we start on the Jade Saber. Oh, let's see here. So the Jade, Jade Saber is on their way back to Coruscant. Uh, Jaina is uh, handling, handling the controls. She's piloting her in. Uh, Mara has went to take a little nappy. And uh, Leia is uh, showing her insecurities as a mother. <laughs> that, again, is, again. <laughs> is that kind of summing it up there? Um, so, so yeah, Mara, uh, Mara and, and Jana, we've, I think we kind of said this in the first chapter, they have a, a very unique bond. It's, it's like a little sister, big sister kind of thing. But mm-hmm. Mara uh, feels, I think, a lot more confident in Jana's ability than Leia does, but you know, Leia's her mom and, and Leia is force sensitive, but she's not a Jedi and she doesn't necessarily understand all the things that, that Janet can, can accomplish. Um, but you know, I mean, Leia can pilot, Leia can do a lot of stuff, but you know, it's, it's just kind of like, I guess it would be the, be the, uh, the equivalent of, uh, like, uh, you know, a dad teaching or a mom teaching their their young child at 16 or 15 and a half or whatever the heck it is anymore how to drive how to drive a, how to drive the car it's like whoa whoa hit hit the brake hit it oh god oh we're dying oh we're on fire we're all dead and then it, it's just you you haven't even made it out of the driveway yet <laughs> i haven't started the car dad <laughs> only difference is you know they're piloting god how expensive do you think these ships are not to mention it's luke's Really, not hers. And well, she has a lightsaber. Hold on. A She's minute. fighting. Har- hold, on a, how, <laughs> hold on a darn minute. Did you assume the, own, the owner of that ship, did you assume who owns that ship? Well, that's Mara's ship. Luke built it. That's, I'll say that much. That's Mara's ship. Okay, it's Mara's <laughs> ship, but Luke built it. So what kind yeah, of price no. did he pay to build it? <laughs> I don't know. I think he just stole everything with the Force. Probably. Just like... I need, I'll take these parts from this X wing right here and this Y wing. I need a turbo laser. Hey, Admiral Akbar, <laughs> can I just come hang out on one of your Mon Calamari ships for a little bit? <laughs> there you go. You know, old time's sake. So anyway, they're uh, they're getting uh, somewhat close to Coruscant. Um, Leia da, again. She kind of goes on the bridge and notices that uh, that Jaina is just by herself. Uh, where's your aunt? Uh, Jaina says uh, uh, she, with a smile on her face. She said she was tired, and I'm just chilling, mom. You know, flying a ship. You know, no hands. Um, just driving it light speed. You know, it's no big deal. Yeah, but you know, Le- Leia understands uh, Mars. Uh, you know, Mars' condition here. Not only just being tired, but you know, also you know, she's battling this this disease. Um, but you know, Le- Leia also does kind of go through here. Um, you know, she's tired, tired, all, tired of it all. Over the last year, she kept, uh, let's see, she kept resigning her post and allowing herself to be dragged back in, um, you know, remind, trying to remind herself that millions of lives could hand, uh, hang in the balance. Um, Leia was considered among the finest diplomats in the New Republic uh, with a you know, heroic reputation, a, you know, great negotiation skills and all this stuff. So she's kind of in this point, because she's in her 40s at this point. So... What what all she's accomplished is, is impressive, um, but she's still being dragged back in. She you know she goes out, you know gets tired of the politics and so forth. Co- you know leaves and then comes back. You know feel it's it's kind of like a duty duty bound kind of thing here. Um, but uh, but really you know th- they left Ramamul and I think she feels a little defeated. Naminor, um, although she doesn't know why yet. Naminor basically did defeat her because they also had a line in here where they'd stayed for a little while and she had tried to, you know, uh, negotiate, tried to bring him to the table. And he was basically just kept saying, oh, I'm too busy. Oh, I'm too busy. He, he doesn't want to talk to her. Yeah, I thought it was funny. He made a point to answer every call just to let her know that he was too busy to talk to her. Right. <laughs> it, yeah, exactly. So she, she's being toyed with hard and she but, knows it. But she he, knows it. Naminor is playing a much more wide scoping game. This has nothing to do with Ramamul and Asarian. This has to do with a lot more. And we'll get to that as we go around. Oh, let's see here. They also, let's see here. Uh, isn't this, yeah, isn't this around the point where they run into the second Mon Calamari 
uh, star, star defender. Yep. Yeah, star star defender. Uh, not a destroyer. It's a defender. Okay. We destroyed the bad star. Now we defend them. All. Yeah, apparently. Oh yeah, and they're really talking this up. I mean, it's a brand new ship, and this is actually in contrast to what we're we're kind of seeing in um, in the movies now. And also what was kind of mentioned in the Aftermath books, basically after the defeat of the Empire and the, in the mop-up, the Republic, the New Republic, didn't really rebuild their fleet in the Aftermath and then on into what we're seeing now. But in here, they have new ships. They have new advanced ships. It's not a fleet of old ships. And, and seemingly, they all seem to be Mon Calamari too, which, I mean, there's... There's a lot to get into about their shipbuilding and whatnot, but anyway, uh, what was this? What was this one called? I know they said the uh, the Viscount, the Viscount, Viscount, um, French. Now that's an S. French. Oh, it's French. Okay, <laughs> my bad. I didn't take French. We're Americans from Ohio. The Viscount. The other Viscounts. It's like a discount. There's a bunch of Viz accounts up there. Visa, visa account, I'll the t- visa account shit. I'll, t- I'll tell you what would be hilarious because y'all know that I'm not the greatest person in pronunciations. If it is anything other than via account and you rip me on it, I'm gonna laugh so hard. <laughs> I won't even be embarrassed. I'm just gonna laugh to myself and then never do this podcast again. But uh, <laughs> anyway, so the visa account, yeah, the <laughs> the the, <laughs> the the Mon Calamari visa account. Uh, yeah, and you know, Jan, Jan is like, cause she, she lets out a wow and like Leia's like, oh my God, there's trouble. And she's just like ogling this ship, you know, and we, we are, we've gotten this, you know, Jenna is, is an accomplished pilot at this point anyway, at 16 is how old 16. there. And, uh, you know, she, she's kind of like, like a, like a dude staring at a hot rod and like, oh, you got, you got a single barrel carb on there <laughs> at a V8. And, and really honestly, with, with kind of the exception of Jason, uh, her and Anakin are, are pretty much they're, they're they're some grease monkeys, man. They're they're, they're some yeah, they are they they enjoy the ships, and that's that's probably a little bit little bit more dad in there, you know. So that's kind of kind of a neat little thing. Yeah, Jenna and Anakin are the the grease monkeys, the pilots, and Jason's the hippie. Well, he, yeah, you could <laughs> we'll talk about yeah, but yeah, kind of. Well, we're gonna get into it, but not yet. Yeah, exactly. So, um, oh, let's see here. They are getting close to Coruscant, and Leia has this sort of sort of internal kind of dialogue where she's basically going back and forth. She understands that Janet could land the ship, but she's like, I-, I think we should get Mara for some reason. And then she's like, Well, I'm a pilot too, but you know, no, we'll get we'll get we'll get Mara and she she plays this off, you know, to, to Janet because Janet's, I mean, she's a kid and she wants to do it. And then, you know, Leia says, well, it's Mars ship. To land it without her explicit permission would be a slight against her. Yeah, right. I mean, come on, Leia. That's so, so weak. You could let her rest, though, Mm-mm. Jana suggests. <laughs> yeah, and then, uh, but, but Leia does try and uh, try and give her some confidence here. You know, she smiled at her. Give her a nice little pat on the shoulder. Uh, you know, I know, I know you'd put it down so softly that Mara wouldn't even shift in her bed. And, and then she winks at her and then pats her on the shoulder again. There's a lot of shoulder patting. And as she walks away, he's like, uh, no. <laughs> but I'm going to go get Mara. So you just, you just chill, little girl. We're, we're getting Mara. Um, so Leia does go to Mara's, uh, Mara's chamber here. Um, room, chamber. We'll call it chamber. Chamber of Secrets. Chamber Pot of Secrets. There you go. And, uh, you know, she knocks. She kind of hears like a little, little, <laughs> a little crying. Are you all right? I've Leia never, asks. I've never cried in my life, so I don't, I don't know how to make crying noises. So. My tears are, are made of, made you're, of bacon fat. Well, you're, you're, bacon grease. you're very dark side, so I don't think, I don't think crying's, <laughs> crying's not allowed when you're, when you're dark side user. I just cry blood. Oh, jeez. Bacon geez. grease. So we're, so we're getting hardcore. Yeah. Hard, hardcore podcasting. When are we going to talk about sand? Oh, God. Sand. Well, it's coarse and rough and irritating. Okay. We do know that much, and it gets everywhere. But let's talk more about sand. Okay. Well, shut up. Shut your mouth. Sand. <laughs> anyway. Oh, 
There comes the blood and the bacon grease. Oh, I'm crying because we won't he's talk cr- about sand. Guys, he's crying. He's crying. I'm going to have to give him nice, reassuring two pats on the shoulder and a wink. So anyway... Um, I'm sure you could talk about sand like no one else. I am not talking about <laughs> sand anymore. It's over. It's over. The joke is over. We're never we're, we're never making those those startup jokes in the middle in the entrance of a podcast ever again. Thank You're you. You're the one that does them. Hey man, <laughs> I'm trying to be serious. The second I jump in on it, it was just like, oh, we're done with it. <laughs> we're done. We're done. But anyway, to get back to the reread. Mara's crying. Yeah. Well, you know, she says, you know, she had a bad dream and Leia's trying to, you know, be comforting. Um, but yeah, Mara kind of doesn't really want to talk about it. And yeah, she's like, well, you know, we're nearing Coruscant. Would you like me to help Jana bring her up, bring her in? Mara says, yeah, I I can do it. But, uh, you know, it's, it's obvious that, that she's hurting here and, you know, she, she's a pretty strong character, but she's battling this disease, literally using the force to stay at bay. And, and what she dreamed about, or what she felt, more so than a dream, is that this disease seemed to be attacking like her womb, okay? Um, her and Luke have not had children, and she feels as though this disease could potentially take that away. So she's able to beat it back, which, let, let's talk about this just a minute. So Mar Jade is sick. She has a disease that's attacking her body and has killed everyone that it's infected in days, sometimes hours. She is literally keeping a disease at bay with the Force. Which tells you her connection to the Force is pretty much on a level of, like, Qui-Gon. She's pretty, just pretty, living pretty by the Force. Pretty strong. And, and uh, the, you know, it's like, good God, dude, they can't get sick then. I mean, we could, we could, we could uh, throw the plague at him, throw a nice big fat plague rat at him, and it's like, oh, force, it's gone. Well, have you ever seen a Jedi sick in any of the lore? Honestly, it makes you know, sense. It's kind of a cool Obi-Wan way to explore get the that. sniffles or anything like that. Well, there was this theory of him taking. Well, what was that in uh, the Clone Wars when he's at the bar, angry with Annie? There's this guy who offers him a drink, and there's this whole. I mean the, like, de- the death sticks. Yeah, the, you want no, you, all the death you want sticks. some you want some yeah. death sticks. And there, there's this whole theory of what happened if he had taken the death sticks. And uh, I think and I know. What, what, and guess what, guys? He just becomes a street bum. <laughs> I think I remember. You, you don't want to sell me death sticks. I don't want to sell you death sticks. You want to go home and rethink your life. I want to go home and rethink my life. Hey, if only we could be that persuasive. What would we do? But bad, anyway, bad things. Uh, no, I would do bad, bad things. Yeah, you would, and then I'd have to stop you. What if I persuaded you not to? You can't. The light is light is stronger than the dark. But anyway, so you know, she she's fighting off this disease. She feels you know like it's it's trying to uh, you know attack her ability to have children. And and Leia and Mar Mar kind of have this little conversation, and Leia's trying to be reassuring, although she feels. Kind of, mm, kind of like I almost think she feels like eventually this might take her at one point, at some point down the road. So she she's a little she's she's very worried. Let's put it that way. But she's also very depressed because right now she's kind of coming to terms with the fact there's a very good chance she might never have children. That's true. And they have this whole little talk about you know wouldn't it be cool if. Wouldn't it be cool if, like, your kids and my kids, they all played together and it'd be so cool. And Luke had to take care of them while we just sat back and watched. Yeah, drink our Mai Tais and just, you know. And then it gets real dark when. Go on, Luke. (laughs) Take care of the babies. And then it just gets real dark when Leia thinks of an alternate reality where her and Jenna are talking to their kids, or her kids, about about their dead They're aunt. late aunt Mara. It's like, okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's that's different for you. But it kind of it kind of shows her mindset. She she's she's extremely worried and I don't think she has the amount of hope. And Mara, I think in a, in a way is starting to feel some hope draining. She's still fighting obviously, but but it, it's it's kind of hard. So that's that's kind of where we leave the this first little little part here and then we switch point of views. And uh, we, we start a little POV with, uh, with Jason. And uh, I'm going to self-title this uh, part.
part of the chapter. Jason is is kind of a kind of a dick. Just a little bit. <laughs> Hippie dick. You know, he's he's uh he you know, 16 years old and and well, let's just let's just kind of get into into my point here. So he hears Anakin practicing. He's got the old uh, the old uh, ball out and he's got a saber shooting bolts at him, and he's uh, he's doing you know he's doing a good job. But uh, it even says in here that uh, basically Jason was um, you know uh, normally Jason would leave his brother alone, knowing that the two of them simply couldn't come to any philosophical ad- agreements in their uh, present state of minds. Uh, Let's see. But uh, this time, though, after the spectacle of the council meeting, Jason was in a mood for a good argument. And, uh, you know, so he, he goes in there to mess with his, his little bro a little bit. So let's see here. So Anakin's been practicing for a while. Uh, he, he's going at it. And then as soon as the sequence ends, Jason does a little mocking slow, <laughs> slow clap. What a dick. <laughs> well, you, you know, I mean, I I don't know. I, I guess there are some brothers out there that just you know like to get at each other. I'm sure I probably you know mess with you. There are reasons I turned to the ducks. Smothered you with a pillow at one. I don't know. I think I turned off your Game Boy at one point while you were playing Pokemon. That's so. true. You did. He was an angry child. He punched <laughs> TV once. I remember. We had to switch the. <laughs> the button to a literal switch in the back of the team. Yep, to get it to work so we could because, play our Sega Genesis. Because you would not give me the fatality codes for Mortal Kombat. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah, it was. We were, we were. And I beat you all the time, but I couldn't do fatality. No, I'm kidding. No, it was probably because I'd use Raiden and just do the back, back, forward move over and over again. It's like, well, I'm beating him. <laughs> but I was using Liu Kang just doing nothing but the cartwheel kick, so That's right. it was kind of fair. Yeah, no, no, I chose that was Sub-Zero fun. just freezing you. That's true. In place every five seconds. Do a couple uppercuts. Did no times. damage, but... <laughs> just just get, through, get through the uppercut, man. Yep. So, um, you know, Jason here, he's obviously... He's got a philosophical idea of how the Force... Their connection with the Force should be. And Anakin also has his own... Anakin's young... How old is he, Anakin? Uh, 15, I believe. No, 14, maybe. 14? I think it was 15 or 14. Well, he's obviously younger, but... Oh, let's see here. Um, So after a slow clap, Anakin says, could you do as well? And Jason says, does it matter? Um, And then he says, you spend half your life dancing around with that thing. Uh, Anakin says, we're Jedi Knights, or soon to be. And all Jedi Knights should spend all their waking hours alone dancing with their remotes, Jason says sarcastically. Um, Anakin, you practice, and I spend more time alone than you do, Jason agreed. Uh, it, honestly, the, I got a little confused with this. He's like, well, you just spend all your time alone with a remote. He's like, well, you practice. Well, yeah, and I spend a lot of time alone. It's like, what? What, yeah, what kind of circular teenage, logic? What kind of teenage <laughs> conversation is this? In other words, we have nothing to argue about, but we're going to argue. Yeah, even and, though we're just alike. <laughs> right. And so Jason says, "There is a reason for the solitude and the practice." And Anakin says, "To hone our skills." And Jason, you know, basically, Jason kind of knows what Anakin's going to say at this point. So he's already shaking his head and he's saying, "To deepen our understanding." Oh, that again. That, that always, always. Yeah. <laughs> when you are practicing, what are you thinking about? Says Jason. And he basically goes on about here. It's like, what are you doing? You fantasizing about big battles and stuff and all that. And, uh, you know, so his, his point is, is that basically Anakin is using the force a lot like, or wanting to use a force a lot like what all these rogue Jedi are. They're, they're, they're like the police force. Of the galaxy. Basically, he's got his Skywalker blood in him doing the same thing that Annie did. Well, yeah. I mean, he, he, he wants... he In a way, Anakin wants to... He wants to save the world. You know, he's got that mentality. He's got good intentions. But Jason's view of things is, is that that's not what we're here for. Basically, he wants to just be a monk. He wants to just be one with the Force. And that's great and all. And we'll debate this here in a second because I I actually have a, a a thought about how if the force are real and we were all Jedi and everything, how we should do it. 
and I'm sure you have an opinion too, but this th- this is kind of a little a little disconcerting in a way. So I I want to I want to jump ahead here a little bit because they they actually have a duel. They actually start to duel. Pretty pretty cool little duel too. Uh, De- decent th- bit of writing, yes. This this writer is really good at painting a picture with lightsaber combat. <laughs> right. Yeah, and they're they're dancing around here, um, but there's a part, and I think I might have to go. Yeah, because there's like three pages of solid back and forth. Um, oh, I don't I don't know if we really need to really need to go through here. You know, J- Jason. You know, Anakin says, "Do you think the New Republic's evil? It's neither good nor evil, but I don't agree with all its current actions." Which I I can I can agree with that. Um, Anakin's, I'm getting sick of hearing all this. You'll hear it until you learn the truth. What an impetulant little... Right, and again, <laughs> what? he's 16. He knows the truth at 16. He wants to be a master. And he's not. He's he, got he, he the has, patience of the original Anakin Skywalker. He, he is much more like Anakin, and Anakin is much more like a combination between Han and Luke. I agree with that, actually. Yeah. So, uh, let's see here. You know, he, he just continues, you know, running around the galaxy, trying to right every wrong. Anakin's like, well, yeah, I mean, that's what we do. And this is actually a line here. So, Anakin held up the pummel of his lightsaber. This, he said, is an instrument of law. And Jason says, no, that is a tool through which a Jedi might look inside himself and find inner peace, a measuring stick for his acceptance of the Force. So just in that line, I do agree. A, a lightsaber is not an instrumentation of law. It's not. It's an extension of a Jedi. It is a weapon, but it's an extension of them, not an instrument to deal justice necessarily. We'll, we'll return to that there in a minute. But uh, oh, let's skip ahead here. Is there anything? Yeah, this is where they kind of get into the fighting. Uncle Luke wouldn't be happy about this. Neither would neither would Pappy Solo. But uh, but yeah. So here 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 in the in these pages we we get into a little bit of the fighting. And I did want to point this out. We talked about this before. So as they're going at it, Anakin is is on the attack. Okay. So he he is the one doing the attacking. And they even mentioned somewhere in here that that Jason basically is providing no offense. He's just darting around. He, he's pretty much playing defense, but he's not bringing much offense. He's letting Anakin essentially work against himself a little bit. Yeah, and I do but, like uh, how they describe uh, Jason's fighting style. It says, basically, he's already not paying attention to what Anakin is saying, right. already falling into the levels of deepest concentration, the preface to the conscious emptiness that was pure force acceptance. Correct. So Basically, then, he's in a form of meditation while fighting. Right, right. He, he's communing with the Force. So then we have this little line, Jason says, anger betrays you. The words sent a chill through Anakin, words that spoke of the truth of the movement, of the moment, and of the dark side of the Force, a place no Jedi could ever afford to visit, could ever afford to visit. Anger does betray but when you breed fear, fear can be worse than anger. Correct. So let's let's keep that. Let's put a pin in that, and we'll talk about it here in a minute because that that's an important line. So, but at this point, Anakin's attack mellows. So he's not being as offensive. He's still attacking, but it mellowed. His brother said the right thing at that time to get him effectively to stop well not stop but tame it so let me ask you this do you think that if anakin would have kept up the attack the way he started could he have bested jason we really haven't seen a whole lot yet on jason's skill level true uh he definitely seems to be a very good lightsaber duelist uh fairly defensive you know Mm -hmm. probably form three i would assume Mm -hmm. Uh, Anakin probably is closer to the original Anakin's style of fighting, I would Maybe. say, uh, which I believe was form five. I don't remember I all the forms. Um, you're, you're probably a little bit more versed in that than I am. 
But, uh, yeah, I don't know if that's a way to teach a lesson or a way to play well, with your enemy. It's an old lesson. Yeah. I, I, we're going to get back to it, but that's an old lesson. But my whole thing is like, so Mace. Mace's fighting style actually was considered a little bit dark. He employed a little bit of that energy to fight. Yeah, Vapod basically allowed you to let the dark side of your enemy course through you. Yeah. You just didn't let it consume you. You right. passed it right back out, kind of like how Yoda would deflect Force Lightning in a way back mm-hmm. at Palpatine. Mm-hmm. So it, we'll move on, but I think that I, it's it's setting up a little bit more of a debate here. But anyway, essentially to get to the end of the fight here, um, Jason starts a few parries. First three from his left, then parried again, and again from the right, and then ducked. And as Anakin so into the flow of the fight, uh, thinking to take the third parry and spin back the other way, swooshed his blade right over his ducking brother and overbalanced as the weapon hit nothing but air. So at this point, Jason is a move ahead of him. He's, he's already moved ahead of him, and Jason's flow is just off. So he, he's, he's held himself back here already, and now his flow of the fight is off. So Jason's already won at this point. It's, it's done. Right. Because if, if you're a step behind, you're done. And let's see here. Up Jason came behind it, a sudden, subtle stab that sent Anakin's lightsaber flying away and made the younger boy leap back and grab his stung hand. <coughs> so the, fight, the fight's over. Jason clicks off his blade. The force is a power within for good for the good of within. We are not a galactic patrol. So he's really trying to hammer that point home. Oh, let's see. Then Anakin. Anakin's retorts are a little bit childish, honestly. Well, Uncle Luke is the force to destroy the Death Star. <laughs> and, and Mara uses it now to battle her disease. Right. Was Jason's reply. Exactly. So, uh, and I do like what he says after that. Only when we are at peace within can we think of acting properly upon battles in the wider galaxy. Mm-hmm. Yep. But he does say, You're getting better. And winked at Anakin and headed for the door. J- Anakin says, I'll beat you. Next I'll beat time. you next time, big <laughs> brother. Um, I'll get those codes. Oh, God. Get those out fatality of here. codes. Yeah, you're never getting those fatality codes. You cannot use Google. I couldn't back then. I didn't have a phone yeah, nor not access now, to not the internet. Then or like now. You. That's right. So uh, the, the last part of this, this little <clears throat> excuse me, bit of chapter was just a little bit of a uh, back and forth between Han and Chewie. They're both getting irritated because the Falcon repairs are not going too well. Anakin comes over. He's like, Chewie's yelling at us. Like, I didn't do it. Anakin did it. You know, he did it. And then Chewie kind of, you know, stomps off. So I'm going I'm to pause right here. We do have another uh, section here that I think we can go through fairly quickly. But let, let's have a little force talk. So we have a couple of different, uh, different views on the force here. Anakin is very, or excuse me, Jason is very much about this peace from within kind of channeling of the force. Anakin is still very raw. He's still using probably a little bit of emotion, uh, maybe a little bit of romanticizing of the force and battle, uh, a little bit of uh, you know wanting to be the law type of deal. But he's you know he he's progressing, he's progressing. But you know, the way I've always seen the Jedi, the old the old Jedi, is that they were so afraid. They were so afraid of things. And they, fear, no, 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 I, I don't fear, I don't fear anything, I'm a Jedi. Whatever. You feared the dark side so much. That you that, would destroy anyone who uses it. <laughs> and I'm not saying that the dark side had it, had it right. Because in a lot of ways, and there are a couple of exceptions here, if we talk about like um, Darth Bane and... There, there are a couple from the Old Republic series that, uh, that were very interesting in their... In their um, views of the force. But the whole thing is, is that the Jedi have always held themselves back in fear of the dark side. We can't touch it. We can't touch it because if we touch it, we're going to be dark side. Are you not 
strong? Are you not a strong person? You know, it's like, can you not overcome? Do you think that the dark side is going to, are, are you so weak in your own version of the light that you can't, because light has to overcome darkness. But darkness can cover up light. But you have to, if you're going to be a Jedi, you have to, you have to feel that you can overcome the darkness. So what's there to fear from the darkness? Yeah, and I think that uh, a good example of that is there are a lot of force abilities forbidden by use of a Jedi. Right. Uh, so let's just think about that for a second. Jedi are a source of good. They yep. are the police of the world in the pre of the galaxy in the prequels. Yeah. Um, let's think about this. The Jedi kill people on a regular basis with a lightsaber, but the use of force choke, force lightning, force destruction, uh, force storm, not that that was really a thing back then. The fact that it was tied in with the dark side, it's still nothing but a tool to wage war or to defend yourself. Their fear of being tempted by the dark side kept them from learning these abilities. And it just seemed yeah. a bit childish. Well, to now, now to, to backtrack a little bit, now, yeah, they, they would have killed some people, but it wasn't their ultimate goal to kill people. I mean, that's, that's where the dark side clouds you. But I guess, I, I guess in, in the, could, could you ever see Yoda going dark? I mean, do you, do you, do you think... I think that he's had many temptations over his 900-year lifespan, and he was very close, uh, according to some lore, to giving in, but he was too... But I, but I, he was too mindful for that. But see, that's, that's the thing. He had control of himself. He knew himself. See, see, that's the thing, though. If you know yourself... I, I, I don't know, and, and I, I, I just I view it like that. If you know yourself, if you're truly in like Jason here, if you're truly at peace with yourself, not not at peace with the force. Th this is the this is the distinction. The force is not a tool. That I agree on. It's not a tool. It's a living field that we commune with, and that at that point, through us, it can do great things. But if you are at peace with yourself, if you know yourself truly, what do you have to fear? But the Jedi have always harped on, well, don't do that, because it'll turn you to the dark side. Why? Because you're weak. Exactly. You have a large body of Force users that you have not taken the time to properly train, no. and some of them are weak, you know... But there again, I'm sure and there's that's some... Just their, that's their way of keeping them from turning to the dark side and having all-out war. Yeah, but just I, I'm sure... Act I'm sure, like it doesn't exist. I'm sure there's some out there that, that have the opinion that the dark side is... Is the dark side no matter what, and there's just a potential that it can, poof, turn you. But from from my reading and everything and, and watching movies and all this, I don't believe it. Luke Skywalker had the opportunity to go dark. He could have joined his father in the Emperor... But guess what? He didn't do it. Because he knew himself before the movies even started, really. He knew he, who he was as a person. Yeah. So I, I, don't, I don't know. It's, it is important not to give in to anger, but it's, it is folly to just fear, fear anger for the sake of it leading you somewhere potentially. That right. is not wisdom. And what they need is wisdom. Yeah, and I agree with a lot of the things that Jason says, but here's my problem with this, and I'll try and keep this as short as possible. <laughs> Jason's saying a lot of intelligent things. Mm -hmm. He doesn't understand what he's saying. He's, I, I would agree. He's yeah. reciting lines from the Jedi text. <laughs> he, he, he's, too, he's too young, and uh, he's picked up a lot of things, you're right. But he's he also he needs time to truly build wisdom. And I think the person that I could compare what Jason wants to become and what any Jedi should aspire to is, of course, our favorite Jedi. He is using the wisdom of Qui-Gon Jinn. 
Mm, the living, he's the living just force. not. He doesn't understand it like Qui Gon. The whole point of the Force is balance, and this is what we get mm-hmm. wrapped up in. Yep. It's not about light versus dark. It's not about destroying the darkness to bring bad balance. Without light, there can be no darkness, and without darkness, there can be no light. Right. Qui Gon understood this, and he let the Force guide all of his decisions. He wasn't just this. Galactic patrolman saving every single person he could. He even said to Anakin, I'm not here to save you. <laughs> well, that's true. But at the same token, with great power comes great responsibility. Correct. And having this, this, uh, th- these abilities and essentially not wanting to help anybody is selfish. And that I do agree with that. is dark to me. I don't think that I'm not saying world police, but I'm just saying that if you're if you're intent to not have that innate feeling that I have the ability, I could help. And if I am in control, I can control myself and help better, then why not? I agree with that hundred percent. Yeah. There are other facets to that. I mean, there, there the, are one of the deleted yeah. scenes of the Last Jedi kind of hearkened on that, even though it ended up being a joke. Uh, when the third lesson, yeah, oh third yeah, lesson. Yeah. Um, I don't one hundred percent agree with that, but to some extent, you have to accept that that is true. Sometimes you can make the situation much worse. Well, the the third lesson was was going in half cocked. You never want to go in half cocked. You want to understand the situation from a point of wisdom. Correct. And, and, and for those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, so in Last Jedi, Luke said, I'm going to teach you three lessons. In the movie, in the, in the theatrical cut, there were only two. In my opinion, there were only two. The third lesson was in the deleted scenes. Basically, um, Luke points out a ship, and he calls it a raider ship, that was coming to raid the village, uh, of the little fish people, <laughs> the caretakers. And so Ray communes with the force because she's clearly running full pelt force in hands, which is fantastic, by right. the way. <laughs> but anyway, so she's running full full force to help. She But Luke says, you know, what are you going to do a month from now when they come back or a year? Are you going to be here to protect them all, always? I get that, but Ray was not confronted with all the information, and she should have – she was a lot like Luke in that scene in the in the beginning of his training where he was so ready to jump in. But, but again, he hadn't learned wisdom, and she, at that point, hadn't learned wisdom either. But so she breaks into the little, you know, camp thing and waving her lightsaber around, and you know what? They're all having a party. It's just another, <laughs> another village, and they're just having a little party, and, and, and she just busts in there ready to kill everybody. So that, in and of itself, that's not what I want. That's not what I'm, I want to see. I want to see these Jedi truly emphasize wisdom, when to intervene because there are times when they when they really should but you know it just all depends on how you look at it i think it all boils down to the jedi just need to be need to commune more and be wise yeah instead Learn of wisdom. just going in gung ho and trying to save everyone like wooth does well yeah which unfortunately is what we're seeing a lot with a lot of the jedi and and to to jason's point i do understand cuz he doesn't want anakin to do that but at the same time to sit around and do nothing is, uh, in my opinion, worse. And that's why I see a distinct difference between him and Qui-Gon, even though he's trying to use his philosophy. Qui-Gon thought those things and believed in that, but he also helped a lot of people. He didn't yeah. help every single person you that can. he ever ran across, and he had yeah. to accept that, and I think that was the whole point of his philosophy. I let the Force guide what I do. Yep. The, the Force will never steer me wrong. Everything I do is for a purpose if the right. force tells me to do it. Jason is basically saying, become this master and then just do nothing. It's Anakin it is seem, saying yeah. Anakin is saying, Well, I just want to help people right now. Yeah. No matter what the cost. But he yeah, he doesn't have the wisdom either to understand the difference between jumping in and, and assessing And that's the, the, the problem with the Jedi. There's no central There's no middle ground philosophy it's always a right wing jedi and a left wing jedi yeah. arguing over how to handle a situation exactly. they don't even follow their own philosophy to a t not to a t yoda <laughs> is the only one 
Yoda well, is the only one in the council that even comes close. Well, y- Yoda, Yoda, obviously with his many years, he did he did uh, have wisdom, but uh, we, we, we should probably cut it short a little bit here. I don't want to. We, we need to make a video about the Jedi we, in yeah. general. We 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 have a lot. To, I have a lot to say on it. Um, but we, let's let's go ahead and uh, and look at the rest of this chapter here, and we'll, we'll get everybody on their way because as as we know. It's probably dinner time, or maybe it's breakfast or lunch, or heck, maybe you're going to bed, and we can't just keep them, man. It's not like they can stop this and come back later. No, they can't. Once they start it, it's a one and done. <laughs> exactly. It deletes itself forever after the first Yep, time. you'll never be able to hear a skin. Yep, so pay attention <laughs> to the sand. We're going to quiz you after this. We're coming to your house, and we're going we're gonna to pop quiz time. All right, here. So let, let's, let's go ahead uh, and go on. What do we got? Uh, let's jump to a short time later. <laughs> a short time later. Uh, so we basically have a reunion. Mara, Jaina, you know, C-3PO. And everyone's favorite. <sighs> Protocol droid. And, you know, they're, they're trading stories. You know, Jaina, Jaina's like, you know, she's telling them all about the, you know, the, the little star battle and everything. Like, and it's like, whoa, whoa, it's so cool. And Jason is kind of like, okay, sure. And then C-3PO Dana. is doing the exact same thing with R2-D2. Beeping in him and yep. seemingly impressed with his beeping. Yeah, he, yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, you know, Mara tells Luke about, uh, about old Skitter here. And, uh, you know, Luke's, try- Luke's trying to be a little bit political here. You're sure he wasn't trying to help? We didn't need his help. <laughs> I'm the second most powerful Jedi in the galaxy. I don't need Wooth. Well, you know, she 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 is of the opinion that he was trying to get some kicks out of it and add to his kill count, basically. Yeah, Luke's trying to be, you know, he he he's trying to be uh, positive, but the situation is, you know, a little bit a little bit more unpositive. But oh, let's see here. And so Luke does uh, say, well, "How do you feel about a little uh, trip to the outer rim, babe?" She's like, uh, "Oh hell yeah!" <laughs> With that voice, yeah. Exactly. Stone, Stone Cold Steve Austin came through, and he's like, "Oh hell yeah, let's go to the outer rim." But Mara, are you okay? <laughs> yeah, sure, Luke. I'm doing totally fine. Okay, uh, so let's see here. Maybe we'll just skip the outer rim. Yeah. Well, th- th- this actually was a little little funny part here. So Chewie getting away from Han for a little bit. He, he's he's basically going to uh, greet uh, Leia. And uh, he runs into one of the counselors. Uh, what, do, what do we say? Feor Rodan? Is that what we're calling him? Fior. Fior Rodan. Well, one of the counselors from, from the previous chapter. And I guess he was being uh, a little bit irritating. So, so Chewie hangs him up on a coat hanger. <laughs> I love Chewie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's 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 just he's he's great, and and Leia. Well, the counselor's like when Leia shows up. Let me compliment you on your choice of friends, Chewie. Take take him down, <laughs> and Chewie shakes his head. He's not gonna do it. Um, Rodan, oh, the counselor will hear about all this, and Chewie counselor just, try back will. T- yeah, Chewie just closes the door. <laughs> And Leia said, "Well, you can't go around treating counselors like that." And, uh, I can't make. I can't make. Uh, yeah, I, neither of us can make nah, those sounds. We we need a soundboard. We do. That would be that'd be fun. All the different noises of Chewie, just a soundboard. Uh, I'm sure that's a thing. <laughs> oh, it's out there. Uh, so you know, Leia and Han reunite, um, and you know they they kind of tell a little bit of their stories here. Uh, Han Han's like, well, you know, they do the same. How about a little? How about a little trip, Leia? It's like, uh, oh, we're going. Well, we're going. No, he's he's just like, actually, he doesn't even ask. That's right. He's like, well, we're going on a little trip. He's like, far away. I hope about as far as you can get. How far? Far, far away. Ooh, ooh, they said the thing. <laughs> they said the thing. <laughs> They said the thing from the beginning of the chapter. Exactly. Oh, let's see here. So, um, so, so, who are they going to see? Old Lando Calrissian. Yeah. Not Leia's favorite person. Her well, it, her thing is, is like whenever they involve Lando, it's always more of an adventure than yeah. some. And I think right now she's just a little bit done with adventure. She's tired. Oh, <laughs> uh, let's see. 
Uh, it's like, you know, what about Mara? Oh, Lu- yeah, Luke. She's winds coming. Up coming around. <laughs> Luke's like, she's coming. She, don't you worry about that. Oh, let's see. And then uh, that's really about it. That's really about it. So they're getting ready to head out to the Outer Rim to see Lando. And uh, that that's basically in Chapter 6. A little bit longer chapter, especially than last week. Last week, we were really stretching, I think. <laughs> yeah, I feel like that whole talk about Jedi would have been perfect to throw in from last week because that was a short one. Nah, it's okay. We still were about an hour there. That's how I generally like to keep these. Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah, I, I think... Uh, what did you think about this chapter? Probably m- one of my favorites, if not my favorite, so far. So far, yeah. Mainly well, just because of the whole argument between Jason and Anakin, actually. It's just nice to yeah. see two sides of that and then think of what... You know, which one do you side with? Which I don't mm-hmm. necessarily side with either of them. No, they're kids. They're kids fighting over stuff, so you can't... I mean, it, again, it's all back to wisdom, but, but yeah, I agree. It was, it was a good, solid chapter. We get to hear a little bit from everyone. Which is always fun. Um, see a little bit more of this disease and kind of the strain it's putting on our uh, one of our heroines here. But uh, definitely excited to get to get to what's next, and we've got a ton to get to <laughs> for sure. So, so many books. <laughs> exactly. So uh, we're going to go ahead and look at signing off here. But I'll tell you what. Uh, if you haven't checked out Facebook yet, make sure you check out Facebook. It's uh, just the Contingency Plan podcast on Facebook. Give the page a like. Uh, look at all the fancy memes uh, Darth Austin puts up from time to time. Memes. Yeah, exactly. And then, uh, you know, send us a message if you have any thoughts about the chapter. Um, Give us your opinion on what you believe a je- a true Jedi, you know, should should do in these situations. Yeah, let, let you know, us, who do yeah. you side with? Jason, Anakin, or Qui Gon? Uh, you're always back to Qui Gon. He's great. Guy. He's exactly. one of my favorite characters. So. Hey, the only reason the Death Star was destroyed is because of Qui Gon. Well, that's true. Qui Gon taught Obi Wan how to become a Force Ghost. Force Ghost Obi Wan sent Luke to Luke, Dagobah. You <laughs> use the Force, Luke. Use it. So yeah, no, exactly. Qui Gon. Um, Basically, he was saved there from the beginning, the just like Jar Jar. Oh, Isn't God. ironic that they ran into We each all other. know about Jar Jar. They were both there Jar-Jar. from the beginning. <laughs> so, anyway, uh, yeah, check out Facebook. Let us know what you thought about the chapter. You can also send us an email at tcplanpodcast at gmail.com. Uh, you can also check out our Patreon page if you'd like to support the podcast. Uh, we have our uh, dinner with uh, patrons uh, on there. Uh, and it's basically just a little extra content, and we're we're definitely going to build that up as time goes by. But uh, which we're actually due to do another dinner with the patrons again uh, here pretty soon. We are. We were planning on doing that on the vacation, yeah, but we, we forgot to, to set it. up our gear. It's like, well, the Arby's is going to get cold. That's right. Cold Arby's. We're, we're high. We're probably highbrow. kill someone. So we're highbrow here. Yeah, yeah, only we're... only the best fast food That's with right. our patrons. I think next is going to be. Go be Little Caesars. Oh, God, no. No, we are not. If we're getting pizza, we're getting actual pizza, not Little Caesars. If we're doing Taco Bell, we're the not, equivalent. We already did that. Exactly. And the equivalent in the pizza world is Little Caesars. We're not doing it. I, I will. I, we will go to Five Guys and get some sweet burgers Guys, or I guarantee he goes to Little Caesars every once in a while. I'm not saying I haven't picked up a hot and ready from time to time, but no, we're not Crazy doing that bread. with the dinner with the patrons. <laughs> But anyway, uh, Patreon is out there if you'd like to help support the channel. And I think that's about all the plugs I have for today. Yeah, I think you hit them all. Um, right on. Hope you guys are enjoying this so far. I know we are. Yeah, it's it's been a lot of fun. It's kind of a dive back into childhood and, and uh, reading a lot of these books as we as we were growing up. And, and really the tie-ins to the series and, and kind of seeing an alternate timeline into how things could have been. Uh, you know, had the... Should have been. <laughs> well... I'm not necessarily going to debate that, <laughs> but may, we, there, there's so much information. It would have been, God, it would have been so crazy to try and put 19 books in the movie form. 
<laughs> yeah, they are making the cannon a little easier to follow by getting rid of it. I'll give them that much. For sure. But anyway, we, we greatly enjoy these, and I hope you're enjoying our journey through uh, the new Jedi Order. And if uh, you are, you got plenty of content ahead of you. We'll oh probably God. be passing this podcast on to both our kids by the time this series is over. <laughs> and by the way, neither of us have kids. Yeah, not yet. <laughs> But yeah, um, appreciate you guys stopping by. Uh, It's been a great journey so far, and uh, we will look forward to seeing you next week. Yep, and as always, may the Force be with you.